right into it. Let's do it. Um, when are we going to hear your next album? What's going down? Oh, next album. Well, actually, I've been writing a lot. And I just, just mostly, not because there's pressure to work on another record. I mean, obviously there kind of always is, but like the minute you have a record, it's like you start working on the next one. But <laughs> I think that's just how it is. With the last record, though, I think I learned the hard way that you need to write even when you're touring really aggressively in all the gaps. Um, when I was touring on Siberia, I just didn't write when I was on the road and when I went home I took a break. And when it came time to write a record, to write a Little Machines, I hadn't really worked on anything and then suddenly there's all this pressure to get it done quickly and so you're in a small amount of time trying to like find a new place and figure out what you're going to talk about and find a new sound and one up all your other records. And I sunk into this deep writer's block. So I think I learned the hard way that you have to, you have to really work on it regardless. So I have been working on new stuff, but I think the, the focus right now is still like a year later, a year after Little Machines came out, we're still touring on it. And actually in a few months time, I don't have a release date yet, but an acoustic version of Little Machines is coming out as well. Of course. So that's my next thing I'm excited to show people. And will you tour with that like you did with Siberia? I don't know. I mean, I obviously don't want to give too much away about it, but it's, it's, I know I've set the precedence of putting out an acoustic version of my albums, but this time around I wanted to do something a little different. Mm. So I brought my band in, I brought in a string quartet. It's kind of a more in-depth, sort of late night drunken version of Little Machines. It's not necessarily fully acoustic. It's just sort of stripped down and like delivered differently. So touring on it wouldn't be just me. Mm. It would be everybody, so then it would just be a full tour. But what we're doing um, on this tour actually is like an acoustic portion playing a sample of that with the full band, like the stripped down version. So right. we're kind of mixing it in. I want to get back to your writing. And I, I'm i interested in knowing what is your favorite, or what do you like writing about? Like love, revenge, I mean, what is it? What is I think, oh, that's a good question. I think, I think my favorite thing to write about is dilemma. Like that's the catch 22 of being an artist is, the most inspired songs come from like your deepest troubles. So you're always digging deep and trying to work out your problems on paper. And I write about a lot of other things too. I mean, I write love songs and nostalgic songs, but it always kind of reads back to the sadness. And that's kind of, in retrospect, when I look at my body of work, it's all sad songs with a happy spin on them. And I think that's where I get the most fulfillment. <laughs> When I listen to your when I listen to your music, I hear a lot of acoustic, but I also hear, and I don't know what I, I don't know if this, but I don't know how to define your music. Is it electronica? Yeah. Is it? It's th see. This is a this is the sort of area that has always has been like my pride and my bane at the same time throughout my career. I don't really fit in any to any specific genre, and I'm forever having to make up words to describe what I do because it's it's pop, but it's not fully pop to be played on pop radio and it's it's sort of indie alternative but it's not indie alternative enough to be played on alternative radio and it's electronic but not electronic enough to be EDM so I'm kind of in this you know walking the balance all the time of a few different sounds because I'm inspired by so many things that um, all my fans are a fan of, of me but it's not um, because they're a fan of a specific kind of music so I have fans from all walks of life and all different genres who find my music and like it. So I always call it just like electro boss fairy pop. <laughs> awesome. All right. Someone just asked this question to me uh, a couple days ago. And I thought I thought about it. I'm going to ask you. Okay. What's your why? Oh. Why do you do this? Well, <laughs> It's evolved over the years. I think I've always tried to maintain the one goal, and that's to reach as many people as possible with like a bit of an escape, like this positivity through the darkness. And that's where the sad, hopeful thing comes in. I think everybody goes through the same crap in their lives, and music is what we do to get away from it. So when I'm driving or when I'm alone at night, I'm listening to music, and it puts me somewhere else. And, I, and that's why people come to shows, you know, it's, it's like, let's get away from reality for a few minutes. And I think that's the beauty of art, or gaming, or whatever it is that you find in your escape. Um, so, you know, using that escape to put you somewhere great, instead of somewhere even worse. 
So it, there's a degree of positivity to it, I guess. But I mean, at this point, it's also become a career for me. So there's an, an amount of that that you have to consider. I have a family to provide for, and it's like, okay, well, um, how much do you balance what the industry expects of you, and what your fans expect of you, and what you want to do as an artist? And it's learning how to ratio those in a way that you can still be happy. Um, so the the whys have become more multiple, I guess, as time goes on. But. Well, it sounds as if. Even your work, uh, your audience may find it cathartic, and yeah, have I a find chase. it cathartic. And you, and and I've, you know, I've met, I've been doing these incredible meet and greets on this tour, and I can take time with people and talk to them and hear their stories, and that is the most amazing part of my day, because people, you know, tell me what the music means to them, and that is amazing. I write these songs because I need them and because I need to to say things and get them off my chest and especially my first record that pulled me through like depression right I was dealing with a lot of that and when you hear that that's interpreted in a way in a positive way in other people's lives where it pulls them through it too that's like it's power music is magical it's like a dark art that's awesome I guess white magic not dark art this is rad <laughs> <laughs> all right you've had a lot of changes in uh since your last tour yeah um Baby, getting yeah. married. Yeah. Mar I don't. I don't. Yeah. Uh, what? How is that? How has all of that affected your work? You know, it's like I get asked a lot if, like, becoming a mother has changed the songwriting process or inspired me in some way. And I think in the big picture it has. But to be honest with you, I mean, I've literally sat down and tried to write songs directly inspired by that, and they just turn out horrible, like really cheesy and lame. So I think in the broad perspective, I don't worry about the same stuff that I used to because my world isn't all about me anymore. It's about there's someone else involved. There's more people that matter. So I'm not as concerned with the things that I'm scared of or the things that I'm insecure about. And you start to channel all of your energy that you used to that you used to put into things that you were worried about into something positive. So I don't have as much time to like be a nervous person. Mm -hmm. So I, I think out of this new newfound point of happiness and like stresslessness, despite the amount of work that I've added to my life being a mother, um, I'm, I, my mind is free, and I've never been more inspired. And I've written so many songs, and I'm more confident on stage than ever. I feel sexier than ever, I feel more beautiful than ever, and I think my work is at its finest and in this moment, and I think that that is a result of all the changes in my life. Um, so it's more of a, like a broad effect, I guess. Ten years. From now? Mm-hmm. Ten years from now. Oh man, I have no idea. I mean, I used to be able to put together five ten-year plans, and and I realized that those just don't work and nothing is ever the way you expect it to be. I mean, I had dreams when I was younger and I'm watching those dreams come true and it's amazing, but they've come true in such a different way than I would have anticipated that there's literally no way to make a 10-year plan, at least not in this industry. But I mean, there are things that I'm interested in and things that I would love to to find for myself. And, you know, one of those 10-year plans is, that, is learning how to talk more slowly. <laughs> talk more slowly. Um, and get off the grid. I would love to use more solar energy and, you know, build an earth ship and live in it. And, and yeah, I mean, I took some time when I was writing the last record and uh, went to this earth ship community that's completely off the grid. And I, I had brought my recording rig and it was all off solar power, like everything. It's literally carbon zero. And three of the songs I wrote that week went on the record. So it was a really inspiring time. And I think it's the the thing that's going to change the world, and I, I would love to find myself there in my personal life. Working more with solar power and... Yeah, just, just sort of like, you know, sustainable living, and we're building this huge garden in the back of our house that's permaculture, and it's basically a walk-through garden with everything you'll need in it. And basically, if the apocalypse strikes, I'll be prepared. <laughs> I think about the apocalypse a lot. <laughs> so the, does the environment affect your... Yeah, yeah, it does. I think like a healthy lifestyle and knowing that your your life is in order, like you're being good to yourself, 
you get to your soul and get to your body and you're good to the world around you, I think your mind is more clear and you're more capable of being the best person that you can be and bringing out the best in yourself. Um, your creativity, it can get like muffled by all the things that are around you. As long as you're in a clear space, I think you can be amazing. Cool. You have a lot of, um, you have a lot of followers and a lot of people who have followed you, but you get new, you're, you get new fans every day. Yeah, it's it's amazing. People are still like coming to shows for the first time, and I mean, you know, someone will come to a show that's like, I just heard of your music two weeks ago, and this is my first show, and then behind them in line, someone will be like, I've been listening to your music for ten years. And I'm like, this is bizarre. Ten years. Ten years. Yeah. And and they're, I mean, they've they've grown with you. Yeah, I've watched people grow. It's been amazing. It's so this tour, it's really hit me because people are coming up to me saying they were fans since they were teenagers and now they're like graduating college and they're turning into like these adults going into the workforce and having babies and it's cool. <laughs> That's great. Um, what's the one thing you want to tell your audience that really means a lot to you? Either it's about music, it's about you know yeah. their life, it's about how to treat each other. Is there anything I mean, I guess what Little Machines was all about at the end of the day is just enjoying the moment and letting yourself escape into the things that you love. Um, there's songs like Speeding and Running With The Boys. Running With The Boys is a really nostalgic song where it goes back to like that feeling of youth where you didn't have, you would look at something and see so much more and I think that that's that still around us. We just see it differently because we have more to worry about. But you can't forget that the things around you are still amazing have to enjoy them. And speeding is just about like driving fast and feeling good. I think that, you know, in the big picture, if you let all the things around you that are scary affect your path, then life is just wasted. You just have to have fun. Love people. Are you a role model? I think when you're in the public eye of any degree or in social media, or people following your career, you are regardless of whether you choose to accept it or not. So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, there's people watching what I do and taking it as an example and I think it's important to be considered of that. I, you know, I don't shy away from the things that I do because I'm not going to change who I am for somebody but I think that every move is powerful and you have to show that. I mean, especially when it comes to young women getting into music. You have to be fearless. You have to show them that you can be fearless and you can be strong and you can have a family. You don't have to forfeit the idea of like the life you want just to have the career of your dream.